hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed as well or I'll be coming to pay you a visit. <laughs> I'm Peter Fury and uh, don't forget to subscribe to Porky's Corner because I've been a helmet of the month and you need to listen to me. <laughs> yeah? So follow him, yeah? And get the fella some followers up for Christ's sake. He wears his hat on his sleeve, the good man was. So follow Porky's Corner, he says it as it is and uh, you know, I appreciate the helmet of the month, Russ. No problem. No problem. Thank you very much. Welcome. The bomber tattooed on his back is of course a reference to his potent punch power and not in any way insensitive to the tragedy which unfolded in this arena when Ariana Grande performed Manchester will never forget. you hardcore boxing fans out there how are you doing it's big p here and still i think what i'm gonna do this morning let me uh, have a think who oh, can we ring we'll give you richard towers a ring see what richard's up to there we go rich rich towers let's see how he's doing How are you doing, Richard? I'm, I've just turned camera on. We all right for an interview? Yeah, we're good, pal. We're good. Good, man. How are you doing? I'm all right. How are you doing? Yeah, good, pal. Good. I'm Co just uh, using this time to rest as consistently as I can, you know, train as consistently as I can, and just motivate myself and stay positive as much as I can. Brilliant. Um, I've, got, I've got four little eyes watching me. <laughs> Right, uh, I'll go straight in here. Uh, you're training Cash Alley, aren't you, at the moment? Yeah. What would you think about David A against Cash Alley for David A's first fight back? Yeah, I think it's a brilliant, a brilliant um, opportunity for David A. I think um, David A has looked past Cash, if not for experience-wise, uh, for his previous performances or previous I think he'd look past him um, and I think he thinks that he'd probably think that he'd take him out straight away but I think it'd be quite a surprise to be honest with you Russ and I think the, the better the competition Cash has the better the perform. uh, performances you're going to see out of Cash mm. alright that's interesting uh, yeah Who's been the biggest influence on your life in boxing, Richard, or on your life in general? Uh, definitely Brendan Ingle on my life and in boxing, Russ. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, um, Adam Box has been a massive influence, but secondary to Brendan, because Brendan um, worked on not only physical stuff, he, he worked on the mental side of things, so taught me how to manage the the, the um, volatile temperament that I can have from time to time. <laughs> he taught me, yeah. Yeah, he taught, he taught me how to uh, channel frustrations. He taught me how to um, prioritise um, where we where where I were where we're going to put frustrations. You know because people have said things to me or they've said things in the presence about Brendan 
mm. so to speak. Do you know, you'd get you get people speak out of term, just just like um, by the by comments type thing, like flyaway mm. comments, and I'd jump on it straight away, and I'd be like, "Who the fuck are you fucking talking about?" Yeah, and a lot of the time, Brendan would he'd, he'd, he'd hear me respond like that. You know, I'm just talking about people a little bit disrespectful in the presence of Brendan, mm. and I was like. Do you, do you uh, obviously it's it's no secret that you you got over uh, thirteen year didn't you for torturing a, a fucking gangster or something didn't you so that, are we already speaking about that yeah. <laughs> I 
realised it weren't actually him. Um, and at that point, we'd, we'd obviously taken him a good few miles to you know, where we were, and um, and uh, I realised it weren't him. So well, I flipped the neck, and I, I just the first thing that I said was, "Do not hurt the guy. You don't need to hurt him for us to get anything out of you know." Yeah. feel that retiring at 16 and 1 because you only had one defeat didn't you and he went on to win a world title do you feel retiring at 16 and 1 the glass were half empty for you at that age oh definitely Russ 100% that's still to this day I look at um, fighters or I look at uh, people that have got have a significant amount of money out of boxing you know because if anybody says Down and 
Adam will show you how to perfect one punch. Adam will show, tell you why you've got to punch like that, and he'll tell you why if you do that, it'll create the maximum force of what that punch can like can be. Um, so I, I got a little bit from Adam as well, but um, me and Brendan just used to sit for hours, and he made me appreciate like the beauty of technique and the beauty of me people miss and then countering them. And he told me, he taught me all that. He taught me so much, and I'm I'm not talking about in the classroom. Also. I'm talking about walking around Sheffield, walking over the hills of Sheffield, and on the fields and through the woods. And we just spent, we were like best friends. We spent, we spent so, so much time together. Brendan told me all his personal stuff. I told Brendan stuff that I take to my, my dying, my dying, my, my dying place, my, my place of rest. I'll take, I'll take it to my grave, Ross. Um, and um, I, I miss Brendan, man, and, and I just, and I do realise that because of, I don't want to make an excuse, but because of lack of knowing, because of lack of experience, I fell short. You know, and um, and I, but if I can create a champion, I'll be buzzing with that. And, and I know Brendan, if if they are looking down, I know Brendan will be looking and going, fucking tricky bastard. He pulled something out of the fucking game. It was unexpected because Brendan, one of Brendan's saying was, never be surprised by being surprised. Mm. You know. <laughs> ah. Who's been the best uh, guy you've been in with? Uh, sparring or fighting or um, best job, best you've seen and all that. Who, who's been best? You've you know best punch. With regards to with regards to having to up the game each time, I definitely give Tyson an accolade because there were times where I'd catch Tyson and he'd be out on his feet and you know as a common courtesy. Thing, you know, I'd, we'd stop, the, we'd like not stop, but steady up a little bit. And he'd come around, I'd get close, and I'd be cool, Tyson. And he'd go, Yeah, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. And he'd come back, bomb strong as and like ferocious as ever, you know. So I'd have to step up again. And I'd never ever sit, sit you and say that it was me what get the better of the spars because it weren't. I'd be telling a lie. And um, it was always. If, if I hurt Tyson, next time he'd come back stronger. Um, and then if I hurt him again, he'd come back stronger. So I'm always having to up the game. He helped me so much in boxing, in, in preparation. And at the time, I didn't even realise. I remember going into spas, I was shitting myself for us. And I'd be thinking, oh, fuck, you know, it's, what if I get knocked out? I was always a pessimist. You know, I'd always be worrying about things what didn't even happen. Mm -hmm. I think I've always been like that, and I'm still like that now. Mm -hmm. um, but um, but yeah, I'd, I'd definitely give Tyson number one spot with regards to uh, versatility, and he'd be trying different things. And he's got he's got balls in abundance for us. You don't nobody needs me to tell him that because mm -hmm. he's clear to see. Um, but I learn I learn so much from Tyson, and I like Tyson as a person. But I just. Um, I'm not, I'm not the same as everybody else. I don't fall for it. He's blagged it, and he's doing brilliant at blagging it, and he's made a killing for generations to come, and I respect him for what he's done. Mm. You know, um, not really my type of person, as I'm not his type of person, but um, I respect him. He cannot deny him, and, and he's, he's champion now, and and um, and I'm and I, like I said, Russ, uh, I definitely put him in overall good spars Joshua a good spar because um, he was were, he were fresh he was young he was hungry um, he never never really wanted to do more than five rounds in there uh, but obviously he's improved a lot since then um, but, but it was uh, I'd, I'd definitely say um, like Deontay like, like I say you'd always have to be cautious just catch a glove by the edge of your wrist and you'd think fuck him now if he fucking catch a glove you that bastard and then like um, that, that's, that's it bro. that's all really 
you know, that everybody had their own values. I went to spa with um, Alexander Povetkin and uh, he broke my ribs in first first day of sparring and I had another six weeks to spar. I'm in middle of nowhere and um, and it's freezing. I think it was minus 15 or 18 or something like that. It might have been colder. And um, and he broke my ribs in first first day of sparring. And I knew they were broke because they were like clicking and grinding and like the pain were excruciating. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't sit down. I couldn't stand up. I couldn't lay down. I, just, I, I didn't have much sleep on that night. And next day I had to go in and spar. And then there were like 20 other heavyweights there what were, you know, Olympic grade heavyweights. Um, Russians, a lot of them. And, um, and they were all wanting to fire at me because I was, I was like moving and I was hard to hit. That's what Brendan first, first and foremost taught me. Mm-hmm. Learn how to not get hit. Then learn how to punch effortless. Then learn how to, um, you know, excel, express yourself with punches and movements. But don't take shots for anybody. So, you know, like I said, I, I, I lasted another six weeks with two broken, with three broken ribs. Um, and that's that's easy for people to listen to. But you know, to go through that loss, that's, that's hard work. But um, and I, I did, I went through it and, um, and and got myself through it. Not to mention all the other experiences I had going all over the world. You know, spying with different people. But um, I, um, I I definitely um, I definitely had a I had a good time, Russ. But mm. it's uh, there's easier ways to earn to earn money. I respect every fire, and that's why I say about Tyson: say what you must. He's put the time in. He's put the hours in. Made the sacrifices. He's done everything. You know, I did it for ten years, Russ. He's done it for twenty odd years. Mm. So you've got to respect him, man. Yeah. Uh, tell me about Vladimir. How did you come to get on with Vladimir, and what do you think to him as a fighter? Because you've obviously done hundreds of rounds with him, haven't you? Yeah, Vladimir. I like Vladimir. Vladimir is uh, Vladimir is cool. Vladimir is a bit of a fan uh, in the sense that. Um, He's a warrior. He's very temperamental. He likes, you know, everybody to um, see the heat to the man, and um, he's very professional. No, we don't. We can't talk before the spot. Um, he's very um, routine based, uh, and he's a bit of a geek. Like we'd be stood, and we just be stood talking about something, and he go. Now we'll be talking about like I can't, I can't remember, but we'll be talking, and he goes, "Yes, yes, it's really, really nice." And I, I go, eh. and he goes, "Yes, the, the weather is very nice outside. Like speak like you know, Bora." <laughs> Were you pretending to be Borat? Yeah, Borat impression, yeah. That's that, like, uh, Ali G. Yeah, Ali G, yeah. He was trying to be him. <laughs> yeah, he, he, thought, he thought that was, like, funny and really, like, comical. And he found it funny himself, but, you know, Vitaly stood behind him, looking at, looking at him as if to say, fuck it, I was shut up. No, his brother. <laughs> Sparring, you're paying this guy. 
Chicago in the morning. So I want to see you. I want to see you hurting. Type thing. He never said that, but that type of thing. Mm. That's all I took it. Um, and um, and he, he won't. Um, Emmanuel won't. Won't business. Yeah, he was a fun guy. Yeah, he'd be. He was a lovely, lovely man. Um, but he never took no shit from Vladimir. And Vladimir knew who the boss was as well. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh... What we're gonna say now. So what? How did you come to uh, meet? Oh, what did? What were Vladimir's skill set like? Oh yeah, well, I found it very difficult to deal with because he was so consistent. So what he'd be doing in first round, he'd be doing in six round rows, and it was hard to falter him. And the first time I sparred with him, it was like I'd be, I'd be, I'd be just stood up and I'd be stood up right because I didn't know anything about boxing rows. So Yeah. 
quit now, man. So he's going, no, Richard, man, work, man. Glad me won't want to use you, like, because there's, like, there's a lot of people watching, and, and I'm like, come on, man, like, this is, you can't expect me to get hit. And then I just, he, he didn't understand what I was saying, or he was just trying to preserve his job or whatever. Mm. And I just thought, yeah, and I agreed with him, I'm like, yeah, all right, no, come on, come on. So went into the next bar, and then, uh, and I'll just do the exact same thing. Vladimir walked on it, and I'll always remember it because it's a massive achievement for me. Um, Vladimir like walked on like to try and catch me real quick, left right, and a look maybe a little hook, and he threw the left right, but just at his chin. Well, Vladimir used to carry his chin quite high a little bit sometimes, especially for the counter, and I just slipped outside. Boom, caught him in the right hand, and um, and like I said, his head's gone back, and I've got him with a left hook and then without, without giving him space I'm like around the back of his his right shoulder ready to hit him with a right uppercut left hook again right hand on top of that and um, and he like ended up near roads and, and he like leaned on with his left with his right shoulder and um, and I like hold on to his body and, and he, I could hear him going You think it might have been uh, he might have been on slide then, Richard? Yeah, he were he, not not taking anything away from Tyson, but I walked over to him and I'd never seen any type of fault of his, not a not a not a blemish in his posture, in his expression, in his style. Not in his recovery. Vladimir had come into the gym, he trained, he'd leave the gym, he'd never show you any weakness, mm. right? That day. When he couldn't hit me, I stood in front of him. I've explained it in short, but there's three minutes of next. It's probably two and two, two minutes and um, 40, 45 seconds. I've not explained to you, Russ. Mm. But, um, I, but I, I beat him up in that round, and um, and um, and I went over to him. I went, "Yes, Vlad," and he like looked up like with his elbows on his knees and he went hey Richard how you doing so he went hey you've improved man so I went oh thanks lad and I thank you so he goes no no Richard you've improved you went, your hands are really heavy so I goes oh nice one lad so I goes what 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 does champion think when he's looking at the floor lad because mm. he was looking at the floor and I've never seen that I felt sorry for him you know what I mean yeah he's only human isn't he I suppose end of the day Yeah. 
Tell me about uh, Deontay Wilder. How, how, how did you uh, get to meet Deontay? When, when did you first meet him? Obviously, he's a good friend of yours, and you speak to him regularly. But how did you get to yeah. meet him, and what what were you like fighting him? What were his strengths and weaknesses? They look after you and that when you go out there because they pick you up, don't they, in big Audi Q7s like Dennis's and that, don't they? They go through snow and all that, don't you? What about uh, Deontay? Did he like it then? Did you get Did you get on me more right at first? Sorry, Russ, that's what I was saying. Man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rosamba going, eh, 
man, I'm from England. And people are like, all oh, right, so you've come on your work, you're not come with a trainer or anything. And I go, nah, fuck it, I've come with a trainer. Oh, fuck. And people are like, so what about people to do your hands and, and all that? And I go, I don't even wear wraps, me. And I didn't, Russ. Never. I didn't even wear wraps. And then, um, and Russ Amber, he sat down with me and we're like, yo, Richard, man, like, this is Vladimir Klitschko, this is like Olympic gold medalist, multiple world champion. you got to be on the polar ball with him, you know, Richard, because he's going to try and hurt you. And I'm like, oh, all right, okay, no problem. Sylvester Stallone over there, uh, um, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger over there, with their families, watching the sparring. Um, and, uh, and I was just like, fucking, I was oblivious to it all. And, um, and Russ, Bless him. He loves snooker, Russ. He's fascinated with snooker. And, uh, Who is? Yeah, Russ loves snooker. Russ Amber, yeah? Yeah, every time he comes to Sheffield, he wants to take him to Constable just to take photos outside and stuff like that. <laughs> and um, and uh, Russ, he do me hands every day. Russ now, Russ, he does, um, he does um, Olachenko's hands, he does Moussik's hands, he, does, he did Andre Ward's hands, he did... Um, uh, um, obviously Deontay's um, I never saw him do Vladimir's didn't do Vladimir's uh, he, he do, he's, he's, in, he's in everybody's corner you know now and he just does that for the love of the sport he doesn't need mm. the money he doesn't do it for the money but he's um, rivals obviously one of the leading companies and I'm telling you now Rose, all the way through my boxing career since I met Ross Ashford provided me with grain guards, 20 ounce gloves, 10 ounce gloves, gum shields, boxing boots, head guards, free of charge, never charged me a penny, Ross. That's brilliant. Uh, that's a massive expenditure. That's, that's, the that's when I met the auntie. And then after that, um, obviously the auntie we were just with Jay and Ross. And then he was like, oh, well, I'd sit down with him and we'd have food together. And then he'd go out and I'd go out and then I'm gonna go for a walk if you want to come. We we'll go for walks and then we we'll come back and, um, and we, we were just we were just we were, we were settled and we were always together every day. And then uh, next time I saw him we were in uh, Dave A's camp sparring for Tarp with Tyson Fury fight as well. And uh, they were paying me fifteen hundred quid a week. And um, uh, Tyson Tyson never asked me to go and spar. Never, never asked me to go and spar. You in? I, go and, I, I, I was supposed to go and spar with you and, um, and like I said, Vladimir were offering much more money and I wasn't doing anything else for any money at that time and Peter, Peter Fury, who's a friend of mine, um, I, I let him down once because they'd offered me, I probably did it once, do you know what I mean, but mm. they'd offered me, they'd said, I'm going to with Vladimir and I'd negotiated five grand a week once. Do you think they did that so that Tyson couldn't have you as a sparring partner? Yeah, of course they didn't. Tyson, though, I was supposed to go and spar with you. And uh, Tyson never offered, only Tyson never offered me any money to go and spar. <laughs> That's not like Tyson, that. <laughs> you spar Tyson Fury for free, or Vladimir living in a seven star hotel with a butler yeah. for five grand a week? Yeah. Nah, 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the power. <laughs> Peter's not one of them that'll go up to somebody and and, and uh, be nice for the sake of it. If there's a problem, he'll say, he says something. Done. He's he's straight to the point, isn't he? <laughs> Look at that time he took me upstairs in Yui's camp for uh, Pula and so, there were me Bunny there and a couple of others who sat down him, Yui and somebody else I think. And he, he says, Russ, can I ask you something? I said, yeah, go on, yeah. And he says, do you take cocaine? And uh, I, <laughs> I, <don't, laughs> I just froze on the spot and uh, I said, obviously you know what I said. I said, well, yeah, I do like, yeah. I love it, I love it on a weekend. And, but other people, he'd pulled and, and they'd said, no, nah, no, nah, no, I don't bother with you like that, Peter. Do you know what I mean? And I just said, yeah, and he obviously gave me respect for telling the truth, but, you know, he read right at Yeah. 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 <laughs> Some thought that's me and Dennis have had in that office up there or on phone other stuff and that, but I've never fucking done dirty. Do you know what I mean? I've always. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
mm. all these little slimy little tricks. Mm. I just don't, I, I just, I've got no respect for people like that, Russ. Mm. I promise you this, Russ, them type of people are just better off staying away from the likes of me. Because mm. nine out of ten times, I end up sat in a dock across from them, sat in a uh, uh, witness dock, giving, giving uh, an account of how I victimised them. That's mm. my experience with people like that. So now, Russ, all I do is I just give them a blind side. I just don't, I, I, how are you doing your eyes? Right, see you later. Every now and again, you have to just nip the, do you know what like the wolf, a wolf does when it nips, nips the little pups, a pup's ear just to say, yeah, get down, you little mm. fuck around the fucking, I'm the alpha wolf. <laughs> So did did Wilder it hard then? I know what you're talking. Yeah, we know. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, but like I said, it's we, we do our own thing now, don't we? Yeah, exactly that. Was exactly what you said before. Was. I was just saying, did, did Wilder it that hard then? Is that from being hit by Wilder? And I remember sparring with Yonte and he hit me on, on Temple and I remember like getting a proper like deep, like hot feeling in the left side of my body and that's all I can describe it as. And it was like running down one side of my body, down my arm, to my elbow, then down me, me one side of my left side of my body to my knee, like just, just above my knee, like in me, you know, me, me main archery type thing, that's mm. how I can describe it. Royal family yeah. British cars. <laughs>
hurt me, Ross. With big gloves on as well. Yeah, we had 20 ounce gloves. I always sparred in 20 ounce gloves. Always. Mm. Yeah. Jesus. You'd get, um, you'd get little sly people, you know. I remember Nick <laughs> Coleman turning up to Adam's gym in London and uh, he had some gloves on. They were 16 or 14 ounce gloves, that's what he said on them. And all the stuff were going out their knuckles. And uh, they were literally like 12 ounce gloves. And, um, I remember him coming and his manager going, or somebody who was with him, his manager, uh, he's going, oh, I am. Oh, it's just so, so grateful to have, to, to be here. And, you know, it's not guys, softening you up. We know you've got so much experience, Richard. Nathan's, uh, he's boxed at a competitive amateur level, but he's just, he's really nervous and if you can just take it easy with him. And I was like, yeah, no problem. But it's, I'm not saying it's Nathan's fault. Mm. Uh, you might not have known this guy's coming over saying this to me. Uh, mm. Little flat guy, I'm sure it was his manager. And um, and he's gone, uh, yo, thank you so much, Richard. And I'm like, no problem, don't worry, man. I thought, oh, what a nice fella. And uh, mm. got him straight away, a day for a moment. Boom, sunk the left hook in, like, ripped one in, and caught me on the chin. And I thought, all right, no problem. And then started giving him some back. And I, I remember, you know, not trying to be wise after the event. But before that, Daniel Dubois fight, I remember saying, I remember him catching me with a left hook and he should eat and knock most people out. And I remember giving him some back and I remember how he declined because I was giving him some back. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I thought, he's going to throw everything at Daniel Dubois and if he doesn't get him out of there, it's when Daniel Dubois starts putting him back on him, he'll start to fade. fade. And what happened in five months exactly oh, that. Who, who caught him with gloves then, Adam Bove? No, me. Did you? Because what I did, you know, without going into uh, aggressive detail and all that, I just went over and I weren't very pleased at all. And um, and I went over <laughs> and I grabbed gloves and I was like, fucking hell, are you kidding me? And I, I, got, into, I got into a little bit with him. And um, like I say, it weren't necessarily the nation's fault, but... Um, well, clearly, you know what they were doing, more experience than me. Mm. Um, and, um, and I just, uh, I, had, I had no respect for the fellow after that, but mm. to be honest with you, he's an all right kid. I, I still say a lot to him and this and that. But, mm. you know, them little sly tricks there, do you know what I mean? Mm. And uh, what, what annoyed me more than anything, because I could deal with it, I've been from uh, quite a lot of different circumstances in sparring and fights by then, so I were experienced. But, um, Matteo Madonio, he boxed for Dolce and Gabbana team for Italy. He was training with us. Uh, did really well in WS, WSB, is it? Um, and he was he was training with he was training with us. And uh, Matteo didn't really understand much English, so he didn't understand that uh, that that's what could have happened. Do you know what I mean? So uh, I got out of ring and. Uh, and I tried to say to him, Matteo, just don't point because he's going to throw at you. Mm. Matteo was there to listen to this guy butter us up, do you know what I mean? Mm. And then, um, and then Matteo got in and that Nathan Gorman comes straight out and went, boom! And nearly knocked him out with a right hand and then just put it on him, started ripping into him and I just thought, it's fucking slink. Mm. Slinky, slinky man. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and then after that, I just I went a bit, I got into it a little bit with him and I just walked over and grabbed gloves and I was like, you've taken piss, do you know what I mean, like that type of thing. I weren't pleased because mm. obviously we'd been misled to think that we were just going to move around. He's sparring and he's supposed to train at each other. But yeah. don't come over telling me that you want to be all civil and polite. Do you know what I mean? And, and take it easy and then try and take the head off. That's, how, that's a, a manipulation, isn't it, Russ? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right there. Uh, who do you think is the best heavyweight in UK at the moment? Obviously, Tyson, 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 yeah, yeah, Tyson Fury. Yeah. We agree on that, don't we? Yeah, uh, I, mean, I, I like I like Joshua. Joshua's uh, a pal of mine, and I like him, and I respect him so much for what he's done, how he holds himself. He's a he's a consummate professional. You can't deny him that. He looks the part, sounds the part, and acts the part. You know, mm. you could say the opposite about Tyson. Just we we just how it can be and be a little bit reckless every now yeah. and again and set things we are thinking about it and all that yeah. um, whereas Joshua he holds himself together really well and scrubs up really well and do you know what I mean and um, but, but Tyson well he won't even land a glove on Tyson yeah 
Uh, I think Tyson will knock him out within within five rounds. Oh, Joshua. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Uh, do you think the landscape's going to change it next twelve months, Richard? Right, but yeah, that's what I call them, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, that's what they were in the 60s, though, innit? Yeah, but that's like a, that's like a, a slang term for, you know, anybody who knows what they're on about, they call oh. them black eyes, don't they? Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's like an old school slang term, innit? Yeah. And, um, and um, yeah, I, woke, I drove past there again and, and police just stood outside there, like, shooing people off or, or getting them in van or whatever they were doing and you could see people sat there just Leave us alone, I'm having a good time. Stupid, stupid mm. people. And, um, but I think that's what's what's going to happen, Russ. I think it'll um, it'll be hard to get any any show off the road. And if anybody can do it, um, um, I think Dennis will be able to put something good together out of this because Dennis, he, he makes things, he puts things together out of Dennis has always got a card up his sleeve and he, he's always he's waiting always, for yeah. time to play it, isn't he? he he's probably yeah, got a couple exactly. of cards up his sleeve now. He, he's, he thinks ahead, doesn't he? He doesn't play his hand. Like a lot of these on social media, especially these Twitter gangsters who work in boxing, and they're pretend gangsters. They're, tell it, yeah. they're putting everything out and blah de blah creating fake beef and all that rubbish every two minutes, but they're not, they've not got TV deals, have they? Yeah. Uh, and I, uh, my question is, you know, we aren't taking anything away from, you know, people like Eddie and mm. Frank Warren. They've been doing it for a while. Mm. You know, uh, Barry Earn's been doing it for a while. But I'm just saying to you that, you know, uh, they've got a lot of resources to work with. They've got yeah. a lot of, uh, probably, Frank Warren started off with less. Mm. But Eddie Earn started off with um, a mass amount of resources to work with. Oh. Just in, the name match room alone. Um, if anybody can put something together and make it work, um, it's Dennis, <coughs> um, and I've got full faith in him. But yeah. um, we'll, we'll see, won't we? But I think, um, with regards to you know the the celebrity, I'm just look at me. I'm sat at ringside with sunglasses on. Kel Brooks dad. Um, <laughs> um, that I think those days, those days are far and few between now. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that, mate. I agree. Uh, I think that landscape's going to change, but uh, and it already is changing. I mean, we now it's it's boxing's a little bit like a circus now, isn't it? Whereas before it was about the fights and you'd have previews and it were tough men and this and that. And now, who, who fought other tough men? Now we've got people who don't want to fight people because they don't do numbers on IFL. We've got fake beef. We've got People getting world titles who 
it's it's about profiles more than that now and that it's boxing's gone mainstream but social media has affected the sport in so many ways it's nobody knows who's who anymore do they there's that many fakes and little weirdo gimps out there <laughs> isn't there Rat infested. Rat infested sport. Or and none of them have been to jail, have they? Oh, no. Nah, well, they never will do us because they'll tell tales on the mothers and fathers before they go to jail. Yeah. They'll stick the mums and dads in, they'll stick their own kids in before yeah. they go to prison. Yeah. Because, because that's what type of people they are. Mm. And you know, the food is, and the food is for us. Um, it does seem like these people do get on. It's always been the same. Mm. If you look at, have you ever seen the the um, the, the film about Saddam Hussein's son? No. And so in Saddam Hussein's reign, obviously this is all information, propaganda uh, information that we've got. But there's going to be some truth behind it. Saddam Hussein's son, he was he was when he was flying high and his dad's a dictator and he's doing everything. They were living in a gold laced castle. Uh, uh, mansion or whatever you, you want to call it, palace. And he had the run of the streets. He was, he was. It's commonly known that he was sending um, um, chaperones to pick these young girls up from school, fresh out of school, fucking nuns for us. Yeah. Right? He was picking these girls up, dropping them off after he'd abused them. Right? And he was flying like in his mind. Mm. He was like, oh, I can do whatever I want when I want, to whoever I want, and, and however I want, right? Mm. Look how he ended up, Russ. The one bollock, you know, getting blown off and sat paralysed and a gimp and ended up dying from a terminal illness, something like that. And this is the thing what people don't realise, it's happened throughout time, throughout human history. Mm. If you look at the story of King Midas, you know, it might not be true, it might not be... Who's he like, King Midas? I'll tell you now, it might not be as much, much of a fantasy as the, as the story tells you, but there's a there's a, a meaning behind the story. Let me just change this back here, Richard. Two seconds. Two. Go on, mate. You were saying about King Midas. Yeah, so King Midas, Russ, was a king that basically it was greedy, Russ. It was consumed by one of the seven deadly sins, greed, right? And he prayed, he prayed, Every day, give me all the wealth in the world. I want everything. Give me everything. I need everything. He, got, he killed people for money. He, well, it was gold at that time. Did yeah. anything he could to get his hand on every bit of gold. Pillage villages. Yeah, killed civilizations. This guy was a greedy, greedy, greedy rat. Right? So one day, God granted him his wish. I'll give you all the gold you want. Everything you touch will turn to gold. And it was fantastic, Russ. Because yeah. it touch a, a ball, it turned to gold. It touch a stick, it turned to gold. It touch anything, it turned to gold. Until yeah. it came to time where he had to eat, Russ. And he'd go to pick his food up and it turned to gold. He'd pick his water up and it turned to gold. And he starved to death. How did he starve to death? Oh, yeah. He couldn't, get, he couldn't chew on food, he couldn't drink water because it all turned to gold. And this is what people don't realise, Ross. And, that, and maybe that's a metaphorical example of a story. Yeah. But what I'm saying to you is, is, is this is what stupid people don't realise. Grasses, telling tales, mm. selling drugs. And, 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 and people listening to this will know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. If you're doing anything you shouldn't be doing, and you'll know it, this, this means you yeah. selling drugs confessing to be members uh, um, outstanding pillars of society yeah. looking after children because I promise you if you were looking after my children and I found out you were doing something like that I'd cut your hands clean off your fucking arms you know? I'd cut your hands clean off yeah. and feed them to you I'd make you, I'd make you chew your nails I'd make yeah. you chew your laps off and nails now yeah. what I'm saying to you Russ is this is this is this is the thing what, what, what what's predominant in society. You've got all these rats literally stood up, taking honours from government, sat there, stood there going, Yes, well I'm an outstanding pillar of society. And, you know, we and they're in the public eye, we do this and we do that for society, we do this for society. And they're and they're scavenging the way through life, selling drugs. 
got nothing against anybody and doing anything for any type of money, what they want. But when it comes to things that hurt children, things that hurt women, things that hurt the elderly, right? Mm. That's what I've got a problem with, Russ. Yeah. Now, children can be hurt in many, many indirect, different ways, right? If, you know, the kids want to sat at home now being abused by um, abusive, bullying parents that are taking the frustrations out on the kids and because the kids can't go nowhere. Some kids, us, the only escape is school. The only escape is out with the friends. Yeah. Now, stuck in with those bullying, terrorist, horrible, nonsense, paedophiles, stuck with them and they can't get out. I feel for those people, Russ. And when I refer to the people what are hiding in plain sight, like I said to you, selling drugs, doing all the things that are considered easy ways to earn money, I've got no respect for them. And I promise you this, Russ, if you're doing something that you know is wrong, this is life. And I'm trying to tell you this now, Russ, and yeah. anybody wants to listen to this yeah. should take note. Because yeah. I'm, no, I'm no angel. Yeah. I've done what I've done. And, yeah. and Russ, I'm telling you now, if 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 I have to if I have to do what I've got to do to feed my kids, I promise you, I promise you, everybody's getting tied up, bro. Yeah. If I have to feed my kids, and that's the only way I can feed them, everybody's getting tied up. So what I'm saying to you is, is, is all these people what know they're doing wrong. Yeah. One day you get ready for it because your time's coming. So, and I'm telling, I'm talking about this. What you know, people do? You've got people what they call those drugs, who will tell lies, they manipulate, and they'll, they'll deceive and they'll do whatever they can, strip and scrimmage to get whatever they can. They yeah. know they're doing wrong. They just no matter how much they justify it, no matter how much they cover things up, they're doing wrong, Russ. Yeah. I promise you this. I promise you, Russ. The days are numbered. Yeah. And that's not that's not me making a threat. That's not me saying that I'm going to do anything. That's me saying, karma's a motherfucker. Yeah. Mm. Karma is a motherfucker. Interesting. It goes around, goes around us. Yeah. Trust. Yeah, uh, moving on then from uh, putting an iron on somebody's chest. <laughs> <laughs> You, I, you, you've got rid of iron, haven't you, Richard? Have we still got it? <laughs> you know, that's it, that's it. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's the fucking, yeah. I'm, I'm speechless about that, Russ. <laughs> yeah. I'm only joking. Uh, right, moving on then. PEDs in boxing, Richard. Is it rife and are the punishments handed out consistent? Regarding uh, Liam Cameron's ban four year and other people getting six months and yeah, listen, let me just, I'll just explain. I know Liam. You know, I've known Liam for a while. I, I get on with Liam. Liam's never done nothing wrong to me as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, but Liam's his own worst enemy. All you have to do is look at the physical state. Is he's a physical mess? I watched a, a video or I watched part of a video someone sent me over day and. Is a physical mess. Usually, if somebody's a physical mess, Russ, it means that in some way, shape, or form, they've got something. They've got something troubling them mentally. Mm. So, as far as I'm concerned, to be a champion, to be successful, not only at boxing, but you've got to work on yourself, man. So I'm not trying to be a, a guru or a healer of souls or anything like that. But it's common sense, Russ. And that's why this, this lockdown period has to do good for you or torture you. It'll do good or bad for you. So what what you learn when you've done a bit of jail, Russ, and people won't understand, you know, when you're set, when you when you so often say, ah, oh, they've done no jail, though, they've, they've never been to jail, so how can they talk? How can, yeah. how can they be considered serious? What I'll, I'll just explain your meaning. What you're meaning with that, Russ, is they've never done a day in discomfort, in true discomfort, yeah. where you've been told when you can sleep, eat and shit. You've never, you've been told when you can speak to your family. You've been told when you can see your family. You've been told when you can put a certain pair of fucking boxer shorts on, bro. Yeah. They've never been through that, and until you've been through that, you've not had a true test of character. Yeah. 
Yeah. And this is the thing. This is the thing, Russ. These these types of situations will either completely break or completely make people. Yeah. Most people will break. Yeah. And all I look at when I see people that are a physical representation of their mentality, I sit and I pity them. I look at them and I feel sorry for them. And Liam's one of them characters I look at and I think, what a shame. Because he was capable, physically capable, mentally capable. He was capable in every sense of the word where boxing were concerned. He was he were leagues ahead of me when I went into boxing. When he came to Brendan's gym and he was training with us, he had everything at his feet. But yeah. for whatever reason it was, maybe not turning up to training, maybe not being able to look outside the box and adjust what he needed to adjust to come in, in where he was perhaps that's why he's, he's not made it but the last thing the last reason why it was in my opinion why he, he didn't get what he wanted out of boxing because he was skilled man I watched Liam I watched him win titles I watched him win I, I watched him win things he was he were better than me Russ yeah. but the reason why he didn't do anything is because he was lacking mentally and to blame what, what people do automatically is they go, oh, it was because of this and it was because of that. I didn't make any money in boxing, Russ, because number one, I was shit. Number two, I had no experience. I started boxing at 30 years old, right? Mm -hmm. And number three, I, di I didn't have anybody I, I didn't have anybody else other than Brendan and Adam to show me the way, not only physically, physical is just a a part of boxing but the mental side of it how to deal with the emotional side of things how if I stick with it I've got all the physical attributes and the mental attributes I need to succeed mm. only people that ever told me that were Brendan when Brendan passed Russ and this might be an excuse mm. I didn't have any desire in boxing no. and my dear friend Adam I don't ever want to sound disrespectful to my dear friend Adam because Adam did everything he could to get me to where I needed to be but when I'm speaking like this Russ I'm just I'm saying it in confirmation that I know what it takes I know what happens when you're not mentally with it when you're not mentally with it you fall off Russ despite how capable I was despite all the progress I made when when Brendan when Brendan passed or whenever I left Brendan when I moved away from Brendan, I had no desire to achieve anything in what we we set out to do together. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And and sometimes it can be a reason rather than an excuse. And I think, in my personal opinion, Liam's Liam Cameron's reason for not achieving all he wanted to probably achieve in boxing was because he made certain choices. He chose to party. He chose to do this and chose to do that. So got caught in his system and he got done for it. <laughs> so mentally, you weren't you weren't in the right place, were you? No. So, yeah, my little boy's just yeah. coming to some and stop swearing. Yeah. My, my, my little, um, sorry, mentally, mentally, he clearly didn't have what it took, you know, because Deontay do not want a part in um, getting caught with um, cocaine in his system. You know, Lomachenko done, um, Javante Davis done, Teofino Lopez done, um, whatever, they're just some names what people probably know. They don't, so what I'm saying to you is, is look at the, the phenomenal amount of money they're earning. Perhaps they do do it, but the difference is they don't get caught doing it. It's all good saying, it's all good, you know, yeah, circumstance for us and you relate to this. Yeah. It's all good and armed robber saying, yeah, yeah, well, I was the best armed robber in, um, in, um, in, Mer in, in Merseyside, I was best armed robber. Lancashire, what best arm robber in Yorkshire? Yeah, but you're doing 30 years, pal. Yeah. Yeah, well, I was still best. You know, I had some of the biggest job. Yeah, but you're doing 30 years. It's yeah, not doing the robbery, is it? It's getting away with the job, isn't it? It's getting away with it, Russ, and that's the thing. And, you know, not that I condone any type of robbery. Yeah, I don't. Part of any robbery or, uh, we don't condone uh, crimes like that, do we? <laughs> nah, we don't. But what I'm saying to you, Russ, is. It's the reason why you got caught is because you made a mistake. So just stand, you know, and Liam might not like me saying this, and I don't mean no disrespect to Liam, it's just got an issue. Let's speak things.
face to face about it, Liam. But um, you made a mistake. You got caught for it, and you got you got you got kicked out. Now you've put loads of weight on, so it's going to be hard work coming back. But you're still young. You're still skilled. You've still got experience. You can still do things. Yeah. Don't don't sit dwelling on the past, man. Sit and, and hold your hand up. He's under two years, he's just gone under two years now with his band, so what's he got, 23 and a half months ago. Uh, yeah. right. he, he, he's going to take him a year to get fit, in it. Yeah, but what, nah, nah, is he fuck Ross? No. Well, Ross, he's got that much experience, he could, he could go into any gym and he could be fit in three months to have a fight. Yeah. He could be fit in three months because he knows, he knows what it feels like to blow out your ass, he knows what it feels like to... Um, for certain punches, what where 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 fighters struggle with fitness Russ, is the not knowing what 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 the results gonna be if I if I throw this many punches or I do this many runs or I, I try and lift this I try and um, spar this many rounds. The not knowing is what what's what's the difficult side. What yeah. what fighters struggle with fitness Russ, but when you know it and you've seen it and you've done it all, it's it's a massive foundation to build on because. Is that why you think that? So on on a on a on a scale of none to ten, what problem has boxing got in the UK with PEDs? Josh Whale? No, yeah, he's a lot. Josh is a lovely kid. Um, no, no, he's, a, he's an up and coming kid. He boxes with Grant, with, with Grant Smith. Grant, oh, uh, Charlie Edwards. No, his son. Charlie's a nice kid as well. Oh. Sonny.
I only know Grant and so there is somebody else who trains there as well, isn't there? I forgot who. You do know him, yes. You're a kid. What's his name, Dad? You do know him. Ah, don't, don't put me forgetting his name on tape, Ross. It's a bit powerful, <laughs> I forgot his name. Because I took so many headshots. Ah. But, um, but what I'm saying is, Ross, like, you see these young kids, like, come up and coming and coming through and you look at these young kids and you just think that's how that's how you should you have to just maintain this attitude you have to maintain this hunger you have to maintain the the the, the gut wrenching desire inside you to become you have, and that's the hardest thing to maintain Russ, yeah. because life kicks you like you have problems with women you have problems with um, money you have problems with um Everything else that society throws at you, know, all these problems can easily take over what, what the important thing is to concentrate on. And the important thing to concentrate on in, in a fighter's in a fighter's all for us is just dedicate yourself to what you're doing or don't do it. Simple as that. Yeah. And mm. and, and I look at like I say, I look at Liam and I think to myself, you can see that it's the hunger's gone out of him and it might be a, 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 a string of events why that hunger's gone out of him. But mm. nonetheless, all he needs to do is simple. Get back in the gym. Graft. Take one day at a time. Don't expect anything from anybody other than your missus when you go home and you have a meal. There to be a nice meal on the table. That's mm. it. And if you're fortunate enough to be able to concentrate on training and have a meal at home and maybe earn a little bit of money on the side to get by, then you've, you've got it cracked to us. It's just a matter of time. Win, lose or draw before you start to have some success in boxing. Yeah, that's that's true. I agree I agree with that wholeheartedly. Uh, yeah. Right then, on to the last question then. Uh, what would the... How old do you have it? Dalton. Dalton, oh, Dalton, yeah. Smith, yeah. yeah. Him, he's a perfect example. Look at him. You can see that he doesn't know anything about any type of PD. You don't know anything about anything like that. Yeah. He's a young kid, physically capable, mentally capable. Speak to him. Look at his dog. That's how that's a good indication, Russ. Look at his dog. His dog's creamed and proper and groomed and he just looks after everything what he's got in his little world, he looks after it. Yeah. And in his little world, the biggest part of his world is boxing. The biggest what? It, the biggest part of his world is boxing. It's first and foremost priority. When he gets up, he's thinking about boxing. When he goes to sleep, he's thinking about boxing. He's the perfect example of what, in my opinion, every um, striving champion, striving fighter wanting to become champion should be. I really, I really like the kid. You know, you can see he's clean. Yeah. You can see him. Yeah. Uh, moving on then, uh, what would the 40-year-old Richard Towers tell the 20-year-old Richard Towers? Uh, I'd, say, I'd say to the 20-year-old me, if you want to do something, the same as what I've just said, Russ, if you want to do something, if it's boxing, get into it now. And it's going to take a minimum of 10 years to see any significant uh, yeah. progress, yeah. To, to make any significant amount of money. Yeah. It's going to take a minimum of 10 years. Yeah. If you're not prepared to dedicate yourself completely for the majority of the day, the majority of your time, for 10 years, don't bother doing it because you're wasting your time. So pick something that you want to achieve something in 10 years minimum and you'll become competent to, uh, to compete at the highest level of whatever you're doing, yeah. whatever subject you've chose to um, undertake. Yeah. That's what Tom's on for us. Brilliant. Well, that's been fantastic, Richard. It's been great to have you on. Oh, nice one, pal. No problem. Uh, keep in touch and... I'm not sure when I'll get this out because I'm going to get uh, the, the, the tech guys to jazz it up a bit and do it justice because it's been a great 90 minutes or 91 minutes. Oh, nice one, Russ. Well, thanks very much. Send it to me before you put it out, Russ. Well, I what? Yeah, I'll send it to you before it goes out, mate. No problem. Yeah, wicked, man. 
All right, mate. You take care. Nice. Nice one, Ross. Cheers, mate. Family, yeah? Love to, same, same to you, love to your family. Take care, Rich. Bye-bye. Cheers, pal. Speak soon. Bye. And that were Richard Towers' story on life and boxing and Vladimir's camp and being involved with Furies, Wilder, Dennis, Ingalls. A good story. Uh, they're saying it might be made into a film one day, so that's good. It's all positive stuff, isn't it? Uh, I like the bit where he said, if you can go training and just go home and have a meal with your family at night, you should be happy for that while you're building. That's a good thing to for people who are not doing so good financially or blah de blah. But because whenever you're in jail, that's all you say. Oh, I always want a cup of tea with our last or a not meal. <laughs> You've got to take that mentality out here sometimes, aren't you? But that's brilliant. That I enjoyed that, and uh, that'll probably be a week or something before I get this sorted and jazzed up. But all right, so peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. All right. Thanks for thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe, and don't forget to leave a comment. All right. That includes you trolls as well and all your fake accounts. <laughs> oink oink. <laughs> you like that one, didn't you? Right. First of all. I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. Uh, because we're on this journey together, aren't we? So anybody got any ideas for the channel, fire them over to me. Porkycorner at mail.com. Alright? Shout out to Innovation Alloys and South Yorkshire Packaging. Alright? Don't forget to subscribe, keep on trucking. <laughs>